Okay, this is part 10 of our tutorial right at the end, and this is updating data in our database. Now it's actually very similar to deleting data, um, but let's just step through what we're going to cover. We are going to find our selected task in the data grid view, so we'll click on the, uh, so we'll have a selected row on data grid. We will click update, that will retrieve those elements and put them in our uh, form attributes, ready for us to edit them. We'll update those attributes in the form, and then we will click the update button to actually push those updates through to our database. We'll save it. Okay, so there's quite a bit of code here. It's not that complicated, but um, it's a, quite a bit of code, and it's, it's a two-step process. And a bit clunky. So here's our update uh, click method. Now, what we want to do, and again, I don't really recommend you do this in the real world, we want to check to see what the text is of our um, update button. Is it update or is it save? And depending on what it's set to, then we will perform a different uh, function. So in the first instance, we're going to check to see if it's set to update. And if it is, then all we want to do is basically uh, populate our form uh, elements with the whatever's been selected. So let's do that now. So we'll set our uh, text task text to data equal to data grid view one selected cells selected cells and this time the index is one and we'll set that to the value and we'll set that to string so basically give us the the value in our uh, column index of one which is basically the name of the task and put that into that form element date date time picker they tend to pick our one. We want to set the value of that to data grid view. Data grid view one. Selected cells. And this time the index is three. And value. And we need to actually cast that to a date time in order for that to take and remove that error. There you go. And then we then want to set the uh, correct status in our combo box. So in order to do that, we'll do a for each loop. And we'll say a for each status S in CBO status items. So remember we populated our combo box with basically our directly with our um, status objects. So that's still the case. So basically we just want to check to see if the name of our, uh, of the objects that we're iterating through equals the selected, uh, so it equals the status in our data grid view. Selected cells index two this time, value to string. Okay, and then we'll set our CBO status selected item to S. So it's a bit of a convoluted way, basically we're going around all the um, items in our combo box, we're finding what the text of our status is in our selected item, in the match we're selected, setting that as the selected item. Um, and then importantly, in order for this function to work, we are going to set the state, the text of our update task button. We're going to call that to save. Again, not particularly wonderful, but again, it is it's required in order for our flow to work. And it would, it would work even better if I put that in the right place. Put it inside there. And then in our else, if we will check to see if the command update task text equals save, in which case is this is when we actually want to push it to our database. So in this instance, we're going to create a variable called 
um, update task. Actually, let's just call it T, keep it consistent. RT equals TMD. In fact, it should be exactly equal to this. Let's just copy that. That's why I'm saying it's very similar. We're finding we're finding the selected task effectively from our data grid. And then all we do is T, we just set the attributes equal to whatever we've set them in our um, form. So it's actually in that respect similar to a create method, it's exactly the same kind of idea really. So we'll set the status ID the foreign key of the task equal to CBO status selected item selected item as uh, status ID. Okay, so we're going to our combo box and we are getting the selected item and we're retrieving the ID of that selected. What did I do there? Okay, fantastic. Something not quite right there. ID, I don't know where that, that came from. There we go. All right. And then update task. Actually, updated the task that we want to update. We want to set the due date equal to date time picker. value. Great. And then our TM context, you want to save changes, flush those changes through basically. We also want to refresh our data. And then just finally we want to reset our form as well. So CMD update task text. Put that back to update. Text task text. We'll just empty that out. Uh, date time picker. Value. We'll just set that to the date time now, whatever it is now. And then our CBO status, we'll just set the text to uh, please select. And that's it finished. So let's try that, it's a bit convoluted. And in fact, the updating of the task is actually relatively trivial, but let's just have a look and see if that works. So let's change this, uh, we'll select this, we'll click update. So you can see the button's changed to save, it's populated uh, the status as to do and the uh, task name is have coffee. And we'll change that to have tea instead. It's uh, half past nine in the evening here, so probably not a good idea to have coffee. We'll save it, there we go. Our data grid has been refreshed, so the task name is have T. We've reset our form elements to empty tasks, blah, blah, blah. If we go to our database, just to make sure it's flushed through, indeed it has. So we've updated data in our database. Now we've not put anything for the cancel button. I'm not gonna do that, it's very trivial. It basically just does this last bit of coding that we had here. It basically just does this. It just resets um, the form. In fact, let's do it. Let's 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 not be lazy and let's do it. I'm going to copy this though, and we're going to do that. I'm just being really lazy. Let's just paste those in. So the reason we do that, just to just to round the circle. Say we go. I want to update this update, and then we go. Actually, do you know what? I don't want to update that after all. I just want to cancel it. It just swips, flips these things back. That's all. And we're done. Okay, we're done. That was a, a pretty long tutorial this time. I'm pretty tired at the end of it. I'm sure you are too, probably. 
I hope you found it useful. If you have any comments uh, about how it could be improved or if there's anything that wasn't clear to you, please leave it in the comment section below. All I ask is that you keep it constructive. So I don't mind uh, negative stuff as long as it's constructive with maybe some suggestions on how I can improve. If you just go, that was rubbish, well, I, I don't know how to get any better if you thought it was rubbish. So tell me why you thought it was rubbish. And I'm always quite happy to get that kind of feedback. So please be constructive. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's free, it doesn't really cost you anything and it just gives me uh, more impetus to keep going. Uh, every time I get an email saying somebody else has subscribed to the channel, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Check out the, the website, bindanaythistle.com. It's got all the tutorials on there but in written form so you may prefer it in that format. Other than that, it's been a pleasure having you and I will see you next time.